Thank you very much, fellow Kenyans. I'm Babu Owino, Member of Parliament in Bakasi East constituency. Today, we will have an, uh, a very uh, enjoyable subject that is social studies offered at the primary level. And this subject today will be offered by teacher Dina Ogejo, a very renowned teacher in this nation, a teacher who's changed lives, who's transformed uh, uh, our learners from primary level to the secondary level, and eventually the students, the learners at the primary level, and we know of the history of so many of them who have made it in life. Mwalimu Karibu. Today, I want to teach Social Studies Standard 5. And as I teach Social Studies Standard 5, our topic will be the physical environment. And the physical environment our subtopic will be definition of a map. I am your teacher Dina. Stay tuned as we continue, as I continue teaching you and you also learn. Welcome to this lesson. The learning outcomes. What do I expect by the end of this lesson? These are some of the learning outcomes. As a learner, by the end of this lesson, you should be able to define the term map. You should be able to define the term map. Another one, you should be able to identify elements of a map. The third one, you should be able to name the 16 points of a compass. So that is our introduction. When I ask you, what is a map or how can we describe a map or a map can be described as look at that a map is just a drawing the drawing which represents a place or part of the earth surface on a flat surface or on a piece of paper you've drawn a map before you've drawn the map of a classroom you have drawn a map of your school. And today I just want to tell you that whatever you have been drawing, the whole school cannot be drawn on a piece of paper. But it can just be represented on a piece of paper. So when I'm talking about a map, I'm talking about a drawing, sorry, a representation of a place or part of the earth's surface on a flat surface or on a piece of paper. So that's how we can describe a map. Another way we describe a map, information that guide or help us to know the meaning of the things found in a map are called elements. So when we are talking about a map, there is some information which is put in it, and this information will help us to read what is in the map. This information normally is known as elements. So we have some elements in every map that we read. The elements of a map include the following. We don't just talk about the elements, then that's all. The elements of a map in this class, we shall study the following. One of them is the title. Another one is the frame. We have the key, we have the scale, and we have the compass. I will repeat. The elements of a map include, one of them is the title, we have the frame, we have the key, and we also have the scale, and finally the compass. So with these elements, we will be able to read a map. Now, let's look at the elements of a map and their uses. Why do we talk about elements of a map? How are they used? So some of these elements of a good map, and we must say elements of a good map. So some of the elements of a good map and their uses include the following. So the following, I'll be showing them to you as we move on. One of them is the title. The title. So what is the title? A title is the heading. The way you write a heading, 
a title is a heading or a name. This name is given to a map. So a map must have a title, just the way you also have your name. Your name is called, I'd already told you my name earlier. So a map has a name and a map has a heading. This map is usually written, or rather the name. The title is normally written at the top. It is written at the top or bottom of a map. It's either written at the top or the bottom of a map. So this title will help a person reading the map. It helps a person reading the map to know the name of the place, the name of the place shown on the map. So you can't just say that your name is so and so and you have another name and another one. You must show us. So the title, we will say that your title is you are so and so. So I'll be able to identify who you are even amongst others. So when I talk about a title, I'm talking about a heading, I'm talking about a name, how to read the map. Let's look at the frame. Dear Lana, the frame is another element of a map. So when we are talking about a frame, we are talking about a border. A border that is drawn around a map. There is a border that is drawn around a map like that. There is always a border that is drawn around a map. This border will make your map very, very neat, just the way you are. So a frame is a border that is drawn around a map. And it makes your map look neat and indeed complete. So when we are talking about a map of an area, even a map of your estate where you are living, we cannot just leave it like that. That will mean that all the estates that surround you like that is part of your estate. But remember, we are particular. So when I'm talking about a frame, a frame now will make your work very, very neat and very complete. The third element of a map is the key. There is something called the key. So this key is a list of symbols that have been used on a map. You find that there is a list of symbols that have been used on that particular map we are talking about. Just the way we talk about the classroom. When you sit inside the classroom, there's the position of the teacher in front and the teacher's desk is normally put in front. There's the position where you yourself sit. And where you sit, I can identify it. When I get in and you tell me from the key, just from the key, I'll be able to identify where you sit because you'll have written your name, of course. So the key helps us to identify some of the things that are contained in that particular map. The key, again, has some symbols. In the key, you may have some symbols. These symbols will help us identify where, what, and what is in that particular place. So the key, when we talk about the key, I repeat, it's another good element of a good map. Another thing we have in a good map is the scale. We have the scale. So why are we talking about a scale? The scale also shows the relation between the distance on the map and the real distance on the ground. Remember, I've already said that you cannot draw even your own house, your own house or your own class. You cannot draw a whole class in your book. So the scale we will use. We may measure the class, but reduce it in centimeters, which you normally use uh, a ruler. Use a ruler to measure in centimeters. So the scale shows the relation between the distances on the map and the real distances on the ground. This scale is normally given as a ratio. It's normally given as a ratio. For example, one centimeter represents one kilometer. It's written there, 
one centimeter here. One centimeter represents one kilometer. So in ratio form, one, centi one centimeter in ratio form is equals to 100,000 kilometers. So that one, as you continue, we will always learn. Then we have number five, which is called the compass. This compass, it shows the position, position of a place in relation to the other places on the map. Just the way you sit in class. There are those people who sit, who sit in front and there are those ones who sit at the back. So if I want to find them, I will just use the compass. So the compass will show me the direction, the direction of where your friend sits. Those ones sitting at the back and those ones sitting at the front. I'll be able to use the compass and I will find. So when you tell me that uh, Wanyande sits to the north, I will know where Wanyande sits in the classroom. Now, look at that. Before you, on the screen, I've shown a map of Kenya and I've shown the elements. So I will start with the elements, but I can mention them anyhow. Down here, here, around this place, you can see it down here. Down here, you can see the key. It is written the key. So whatever is in blue here is called the lake. There is the mountain, the mountain peak. We have that drawing river. Then we have that for a plateau. So this one is the key. I had told you earlier that the key, that the key, that the key will represent symbols. In the key, we have symbols. These symbols are the ones which will help you to read this map over here. Then we have the frame. I told you that the frame will make our work look very neat. Look at that. All the four sides. It will make our work look very neat. Then I said we also have the compass. This compass normally is drawn on the side of the map. Look at the compass. And our compass is north, east, south, and west. Something to talk about. The needle of the compass is always pointing to the north. So when you are reading, the way you sit, as you, as you stretch your hand forward, normally that one is the north. When you stretch your hand backward, that one is south. When you stretch your right hand, your right hand, your right hand, that one will mean east, and your left hand will point to the west. So the needle of the compass is always pointing north. So your paper or your book is just in front of you. Now, what about the title? The title of, the map, of this map is this one here, a map of Kenya showing elements. That is the name of that map. So when you are reading it, already you have an idea. This is a map of Kenya showing the elements. The compass of the map will use, will help us to locate the direction of a place and it is usually drawn on the side of the map just the way I've said earlier. We have the cardinal points and the eight compass points. These cardinal points are four. You've ever learned them before, the north, the east, the south and the west. But we also have the eight compass point where you'll find that the four compass point is the one which is further divided to come up with the eight. Look at this, the cardinal points. North, we have the north, we have the east, we have the south and the west. Those are cardinal points. The eight compass points are here. Now we have the north. 
Then we go to northeast. Then we go to east. Then we go to southeast. Then we come to the south. Are we there with you? Then we come to the southwest. We come to the west. And we come to the northwest. So it is just from these four cardinal points that the eight compass point has been derived from. You just draw more lines and then you make what? Eight. So it is used to help us read the map. The eight compass point again can be further divided to come up with the 16 point compass. So the 16 point compass will now make us read the map better than we have ever read it. It will show us more and more directions. Now let's look at the 16 com point compass. Here you are. This is the 16 point compass. We also start from the north. And you can see this one is even marked in another color, different from all the rest. So the needle of the compass is always pointing to the north. So we start from north. Then we have north northeast. Then we have northeast. Then east northeast. Then we go to the east. From the east, we go to east southeast. Then we go to southeast. South southeast. Then now we come to south. Now we have gone half. We climb again. We go south southwest. Then we go to southwest. West southwest. Then we go to the west. West northwest. Northwest. North north west. Then we return to the north. That is called the 16 point compass. So this one now will give us better directions. Why? The four compass point cannot give us all those directions. Maybe there's something that you want to identify, but it can be found in south, southeast. So you will not be able to get it correctly. You'll go a long distance looking for it. So we call this one the 16 points compass. I hope we are still together. So I've just said that the 16-point compass is used to give direction of places in relation to others. Lana, I hope you are able to remember the 16-point compass. Now not. This one I've just said not. Something to remember. And the four cardinal points I've already said cannot locate all the places on the map. So the four cardinal points are further divided into eight. So we call it the eight-point compass. Then the eight-point compass is also further divided to get the 16-point compass. You understand? Let's move. Now, we want to see all those compass points. They are different, but you will be able to see them. That one is called the cardinal points. This one is the cardinal points. There are four. North, east, south, west. We have the eight-point compass. Again, I repeat. North, northeast, east, southeast, south, southwest, west, Northwest, then we get back to north. Then we have the 16 point compass. The 16 point compass, we have north, 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 east, north, east, east, north, east. Then we have the east, we have the east, south, east, we have the south, east, south, south, east, south, 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 west, south, west, west, south, west, west. West, northwest, northwest, north, northwest, then we get back to north. You see that? Very good. Now, the compass still helps us to locate direction of a place on a map. And I've already said that it is usually drawn on the side of a map is usually drawn on the side of a map. So still we have the cardinal points and the eight points compass. 
and the 16 points compass, this one here. Look at the way it is named. Look at the way it is named. Just take a look. From the north, this particular point here, you can see it again. I'll repeat because maybe it passed you when I was talking about it earlier. We have the north northeast over there. Then we have northeast here. Then we have east northeast. Then we have the east. Then we have the east southeast. Then we have the southeast. We also have the south southeast. We have the south. Then we have the south southwest. Then we have the southwest. West southwest. Then we have the west. West northwest. Then we have northwest. North northwest. Then we return to north. So you can see the way it is named. So where it is north, you can see in bracket, I've written N. Sometimes you can see N. Where it is north, northeast, I've written N, N, E. Sometimes you can find such. When it is northeast, I've written N, E for northeast. Then east, northeast, I've written E, N, E. East, northeast. Then east alone is represented by E. Then we have east, southeast, east, southeast. We have south east, which is south east. Then we have south south east, south south east. S S E. So we still continue. That was halfway. Then now we start from south again as we move. So south again, you'll find sometimes it is written as S. Then we have south southwest. S S W. Then we have southwest, southwest, or S W. Then we have west, southwest, W S W. Then we have west, W. We have west, northwest, W N W. Then we have northwest, N W. Then we have north, northwest, N N W. So you will find that written somewhere. And you should not assume that you did not know. I've already shown you there. So this is the 16-point compass, and that is how it is written. Dear Lana, I've taken you so much and I've taught you about different compass. Now, I want to check if you really understood what I was, I've taught. So I have questions at the back. There are questions on the screen to check on whether you understood what I was teaching. So number one, a dash is a representation of a piece of the earth on a flat surface or a, a paper. A dash is a representation of a piece of the earth on a flat surface or a paper. Are you there? Let's see if you got it. I hope you are writing them down. You are doing the, 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 the test. Did you get the answer? The answer there is a map. So we say a map is a representation of a piece of the earth on a flat surface or paper. Put a tick if you got it. Let's get to the next question. A good map must have the following elements. A good map must have the following elements. That is question two. So I have dash, 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 and a dash. Write your answers, giving you time. Let's see if you got them. A good map must have the following elements. The answer is, must have a title. You remember? Good. Must have a frame. Do you remember? Must have a key. Must have a scale. And must have a compass. Do you remember, Lana? Very good. And did you get them? Check if you really got them. Now, number three. 
draw and name 16 point compass. Draw and name the 16 point compass. I'll give you time. Draw and name the 16 point compass. Draw and name the 16 point compass. Let's check if you got them if you got the 16 point compass correct. There you are. The answer is there. We have the north. Did you get north? North northeast. Northeast. East northeast and you check where you got it correct. Put a tick. East. East southeast. Southeast. South southeast. South, south, southwest, southwest, west, southwest, west, west, northwest, northwest, north, northwest, and return to north. Did you get the 16 correct? If you did not get the 16 correct, then I would like you, even after the lesson, you go practicing. You may get it from the textbook. Go practicing until you are able to learn them. Dear Lana, I know you've enjoyed the lesson. Since you've enjoyed the lesson, I would like to give you an assignment. And the assignment for today, the assignment for today, using elements of a good map, using elements of a good map, the title, the frame, the key, the scale, and even the compass. Draw a map of Kenya and her neighbors. Draw a map of Kenya and her neighbors. When I talk about physical environment, in social studies, we have nine, nine topics. These nine topics, when you are in standard five, you covered them. And they're repeated over and over again. What changes is the language which is used? And it, will be, it becomes harder and harder or easier and easier as you go to a, 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 a bigger class or an older class or the next class. But they're the same, same topics. So we are once again talking about the physical environment. And here we are now talking about our subtopic for today is the countries of Eastern Africa. Position, size, and shape. The, the subtopic is countries of Eastern Africa, position, size, and shape. When you were in Standard 5, you had talked or you learned about Kenya. So you learned about Kenya, maybe, and its neighbors. And you learned about all the 47 counties in Kenya. And where you are, I know you know where your county is. And I know you even know you are a member of parliament. You even know you are senator. If you do not know, kindly ask your parent. Your parent will tell you who is your member of parliament, who is your senator, who is the woman rep, and all those officers, all those ad administrators in the constituency, you will be told. Now let's look at what happens in Eastern Africa. So Kenya is one of the countries in Eastern Africa, but let's see. Let's see what happens in Eastern Africa. By the end of this lesson, dear Lana, these are some of the outcomes which I would like you to, to have. By the end of the lesson, this is what I want you to have. You will be able to name the countries of Eastern Africa, and B, you'll be able to state the position and size of each of the countries of Eastern Africa. So as the lesson progresses, you are, I'll be able to unveil what it entails in this lesson of the countries of Eastern Africa. Stay tuned. Now, we go to the introduction. We go to the introduction right away. So, when we talk about physical environment, we are talking about what is found just around us, where you are, what is found around you, what is found without, 
where you are, you may be living in a house, but what else is found around you? That is your physical environment. So when we talk about the countries of Eastern Africa, we are talking about particular countries of Eastern Africa. They are found in the Eastern Africa region. So those are the countries we are talking about. Then when we talk about position, we are talking about the exact place. The exact place or the exact location where Eastern Africa is located. When we talk about the size, the size, we are talking about the total surface area. The total surface area covered by, by something. It can be a place, it can be an object. So the total surface area covered by something is called the size. Like what I put on, I'm putting on a dress. It has a particular size. If I put on a bigger size, it may look funny and you will laugh. If I put a very small one, it will be tight and you will also laugh. You will be wondering what's wrong with teacher Dina. So I must get the right size to put on to be able to cover my, my surface area. Now, the countries of East, Eastern Africa, we can say that the region is located on the eastern side of Africa. When we talk about Eastern, eastern Africa, we can say that those countries are located on the eastern side of Africa. And it is made up, East African region is made up of 11 independent countries, 11 independent countries. That one you must know. So among the independent countries, we have Southern Sudan. Southern Sudan is the baby. In Eastern Africa, we normally say Southern Sudan is the baby. It is the one who got her independence the last. So other countries of Eastern Africa got their independence long time, but Southern Sudan Go, became independent just the other day in July 2011. Where were you in July 2011? You see, you were already born. So that's the time when Southern Sudan go, became independent. So when we are talking about Eastern Africa, we are talking about 11 independent countries. So the countries of Eastern Africa are, we have Kenya, we have Eritrea, we have Somalia, we have Sudan, we have Rwanda, we have Djibouti, Uganda, Ethiopia, South Sudan, Burundi, Tanzania. When you count them, they are 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So those are the countries which make the Eastern African region. Now let's look at this map, the map of Eastern Africa countries. I'm just showing you a map on the screen. Look at this beautiful map of Eastern Africa. So I've already told you which countries they are, but I can repeat for your sake. I know you're looking at the beautiful map. So Eastern Africa has... 11 countries. We can start from Sudan. Are you seeing Sudan? Then we have South Sudan here. Then we have Ethiopia. We have Eritrea. We have Djibouti. Then we have Somalia. We have Kenya, our nation. We have Uganda. We have Tanzania. Then we have Rwanda. And we have Burundi. You get that? Those are some of the, 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 the countries of East, Eastern Africa. I'm still showing them to you on the screen. They are 11. Look at it. Take your time. Sudan, Ethiopia, Eritrea, Djibouti, 
South Sudan, Somalia, Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, Rwanda, and Burundi. Now, Eastern Africa has neighbors. Just the way we have neighbors, you can never be an island. A person can never be an island. You must have neighbors. So Eastern Africa has neighbors. And the neighbors are also shown on this map here. So you can see, we have, uh, you, we have on the frame, you can see the frame is there. But we have a neighbor here. Then there is a neighbor. This is a neighbor. All that. What surrounds East Africa? What surrounds Eastern Africa is called a neighbor. So Eastern Africa has neighbors. Now let's see the neighbors of Eastern Africa. We have the Indian Ocean. This one here. You see the Indian Ocean? The Indian Ocean is to the east. And when we are talking about a map, when we are reading a map, we will always use the compass. You will find that the compass is drawn on the side of the map. So this compass is the one to direct you. They will always give us the, the, cardinal, the four cardinal points. But you can further subdivide your, your, your four compass point to make it 16 or even to make it 8. So we have the Indian Ocean to the east here. So this is the east of Eastern Africa. Then we have the Red Sea. The Red Sea is here. This one is the Red Sea. The Red Sea is here to the northeast of Eastern Africa. Then we have Egypt, Libya to the north. So Egypt is found here. It borders Sudan. Egypt is found here. Then we have Libya. We have Libya. All these are found in the north. They border Sudan to the north. Then we have Chad, Central African Republic, and the Democratic Republic of Congo, DRC, to the west. So these ones are found to the west of East Af Eastern Africa. We have Chad. We have the Central African Republic and the Democratic Republic of Congo just here to the west of Eastern Africa. So we still continue. We are looking at the neighbors of Eastern Africa. Other neighbors are also Zambia, Malawi, and Mozambique. Zambia, Malawi, and Mozambique are found in the south. So we have Zambia here. You can see where Zambia is. Malawi is just here and the Mozambique. So these ones border Eastern Africa to the south. We have something about these countries, the countries of Eastern Africa. So I've written there countries like Uganda, Ethiopia, Rwanda, Burundi, South Sudan. Uganda, Ethiopia, Rwanda, Burundi, and South Sudan, they have no coastlines. When I'm talking about no coastlines, that means they do not have any border, any border with the sea, large water body, an ocean, or a sea. So they are normally said to be landlocked. So a country which does not have a coastline normally is known as landlocked. A landlocked country has no border with the sea or an ocean. So those countries are Uganda. Look at Uganda here. There is no sea. There is no ocean. Maybe we have lakes. Then we have Ethiopia. Ethiopia is here. No sea, no ocean. You can see there is the Uganda, Ethiopia borders Djibouti. Ethiopia borders Eritrea. But Ethiopia does not border the Red Sea. Okay. Then we have all countries of Eastern Africa, they lie on the eastern side of African continent. That's why they are called Eastern Africa. We have Africa as a continent, but we have the countries of Eastern Africa. That's why they are called the countries of Eastern Africa, and they are all to the east of the African continent. So we can say Sudan, 
is located to the northern part of Eastern Africa. This is Sudania. It is to the northern part of Eastern Africa. You get? Eritrea lies to the east of Sudan. Now look at this Eritrea. Eritrea is here, this one here. So when you draw the compass, you'll find that when you want to go to Eritrea from Sudan, you are always going to the east. So Eritrea lies to the east of Sudan. South Sudan is to the south of Sudan itself. So South Sudan is this country here. The last one to get its independence. So when you draw the compass, you just draw the compass like that, then you'll find that you're coming to the south. So South Sudan is to the south of Sudan. Djibouti is located to the east of Ethiopia. This is now Djibouti here. This is Ethiopia. So from Ethiopia, when you draw the compass, the compass point, you'll always go to the east of, e of Ethiopia. So you are moving to the east. Remember, I've shown you the compass point. Eritrea lies to the north of Ethiopia. Eritrea lies to the north of Ethiopia. This is Eritrea he here. This is Eritrea and this is Ethiopia. So when we draw the compass, you find that we are going to the north. So Eritrea lies to the north of Ethiopia. Somalia is located to east and southeast of Ethiopia. This is now Somalia. This is the country. This is Ethiopia. When we put the compass here, you find that you are moving from east. East is here. Then you are going to southeast. So we say Somalia is located to the east and southeast of Ethiopia. Let's come to Kenya. Kenya is this one here. Very beautiful. It lies to the east of Uganda. So this is Uganda here. So Kenya lies to, when you draw the compass like that, you go to the east. From Uganda, you walk towards the east, while Somalia is also to the east of Kenya. So you keep going to the east. So from Uganda, you go to the east, you reach Kenya. Then from Kenya, you go to the east again, you reach Somalia. So we say... Kenya lies to the east of Uganda and Somalia lies to the east of Kenya. Hope you are able to see. Let's now go to Tanzania, who is also a neighbor. Tanzania is found in the southern part of eastern Africa. Look at Tanzania now. It is found in the southern part of eastern Africa and southwest of Uganda. So you can also compare Tanzania with Uganda. So from Uganda, you go to the southwest. <coughs> now let's look at the countries of Eastern Africa and their capital cities and their sizes. So the countries of Eastern Africa have capital cities and they, are, they also have their sizes. So we are going to look at them. I have a table. So this table now is going to guide us. On the table we have the country, then we have the capital city, and size in square kilometers. We have the country, we have the capital city, and size in square kilometers. Now, we have Sudan. The capital city of Sudan is Khartoum. And Khartoum is 1,886,068. We have Ethiopia. The capital city of Ethiopia is Addis Ababa, 1,104,300 square kilometers. That is the size. We have Tanzania. The capital city of Tanzania is Dodoma. 945,087. 
square kilometers. We have Somalia. Somalia, the capital city, is Mogadishu. In square kilometer, kilometers, it is 850,167 in size. Then we have Kenya. The capital city of Kenya is Nairobi. Remember, in Kenya, we have three cities. We have Nairobi City, we have Kisumu City, and even Mombasa City. But when we are talking about Kenya, the capital city is Nairobi. That is even where the government seat is. So it is 582,646. We have Uganda. The capital city of Uganda is Kampala. At the size is 241,000. Uh, that is square, square kilometers. Eritrea. The capital city of Eritrea is Asmara. At... 117,600 square kilometers. Then we have Burundi. The capital city of Burundi is Bujumbura, and Bujumbura is 27,834 square kilometers. Then we have Rwanda. The capital city of Rwanda is Kigali. Kigali is 26,333. Then lastly, we have Djibouti. The capital city of Djibouti is just Djibouti at 23,200 square kilometers. So when we add the size of Eastern African region in square kilometers, it will be 646,607. That is the, the, the area it covers in the whole of Africa. 6,446,607. All those 11 countries of Eastern Africa. So that is the area they cover in Africa. We are moving on now. I've talked and talked and I've talked. So I want to check. If you really understood what I've been teaching since I started, I have questions there on the screen. And my first question is, name the countries that make Eastern African region and their capital cities. Very simple. Name the countries that make Eastern African region and their capital cities. There are 11. I'm giving you time. can name them, number one. Go to number two also. Number three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. 10, 11. We shall look at the answers and find out if you really got them correct. So get ready to mark. Here are the answers. There you are. We have Sudan, capital city, Khartoum. We have Ethiopia, capital city, Addis Ababa. We have Tanzania, capital city Dodoma, Somalia, capital city Mogadishu, South Sudan, capital city Juba. When we are talking about South Sudan, they thought of changing their capital city to Ramshiel. So when it will be ready, they will ever let us know. So we have Kenya, capital city Nairobi, Uganda, capital city Kampala, Eritrea, capital city Asmara, uh, Burundi, capital city Bujumbura, Rwanda, capital city Kigali, Djibouti, capital city Djibouti. Did you get them right? Very good. Number two, name the biggest country and the smallest country in Eastern Africa, respectively. Name 
the biggest country and the smallest country of Eastern Africa. That one I know you know. Okay. Okay. Let's check if you got them correct. Here is our answer. The biggest is Sudan and the smallest is Djibouti. Did you get them correct? Put a tick for yourself. Number three. How many countries make Eastern Africa? Dear Lana, how many? I've sung and sung or I've repeated and repeated. How many countries make Eastern Africa? That one I know you got immediately. So there you are. The answer is 11. There are 11 countries that make Eastern Africa. Dear Lana, as we continue, I have an assignment for you over there. Draw the map of Eastern Africa indicating all countries and their capital cities. Draw the map of Eastern Africa indicating all countries and their capital cities. In Standard 6, you had learned about the physical environment. In Class 5, you learned about the physical environment. Even in Grade 4, you learned about the physical environment. So what I would say, these topics keep repeating themselves. It's only a matter of language and what you are going to learn in different classes. So I welcome you to this lesson on physical environment standard seven. So in this particular lesson, our subtopic will be the position, shape, and size of Africa. Here in standard seven, we are learning about Africa. In class six, we learned about Eastern Africa. In standard five, we learned about Kenya. In grade four, we learned about our county. So here we are now, all these, when you add your county, it gets to Kenya. From Kenya, Kenya is found in Eastern Africa. Eastern Africa now is found in the African continent. So let's see what we have in the lesson. What do I expect about you by the end of this lesson? Lana, the learning outcomes here. By the end of the lesson, Lana, uh, I would like you to describe the position, shape, and size of Africa. Describe the position, shape, and size of Africa. Another one, name and locate the countries of Africa. There are many. You name and you locate them. So as we introduce the lesson, I can say, the meaning of position, once again, because you've ever learned it earlier. So position of Africa refers to where it lies in the world, where it lies in terms of longitudes and latitudes. You have already learned longitudes and latitudes in class six. So we are looking at Africa in terms of longitudes and latitudes in the world, the world map. When we talk about the size of Africa, uh, we can say that the area it covers in square kilometer, the area it covers in square kilometers in the whole world. In the whole world. Then we talk about the shape. The shape now controls the length of Africa, how it stretches to the north, how it stretches to the south, how it stretches to the east and all that. So the shape, I will let you know as we continue in the lesson. So the shape is always about the boundaries of Africa. Now let's look at the position. Position of Africa. So we can describe Africa as one of the continents out of the seven continents in the world. We have seven continents in the world, Africa being one of them. So Africa lies between latitudes 37 degrees north and 35 degrees south. Latitudes are normally named according to degrees north and degrees south. The equator normally is in the middle. The equator is normally zero, and that one, you remember, you have already done it earlier. Then Africa again lies between longitudes 18 degrees west and 52 degrees east. So longitudes are normally named from the North Pole and to the South Pole. So it's normally like, it's something like it goes like an orange, those segments of the orange. 
So the longitudes normally meet at the poles, but latitudes are parallel lines. There is no day they will meet, and they are all imaginary. Don't go outside there and start looking at, 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 at looking at Africa and saying you are looking for the line of longitude. You will not find it. It is an imaginary line. So it is the position of Africa. Then we can say that Africa is almost an island. When we talk of an island, what do we mean? An island is an area which is surrounded by water. A large mass of land surrounded by water. This, this, Af this same, same Africa is separated by water from all other continents except the northeast. The northeast where it joins Asia. I will show you in a jiffy. So when I say that Africa is almost an island, this is the only part. This part here, separated by water from all other continents except the northeast. So the northeast of Africa is a very, very important position. Now let's look at the position of Africa in the world. Look at position of Africa in the world. Looking at position of Africa in the world. Here is the map of the world on the screen. So we have seven continents with five oceans. This is the map of the world. And the beautiful Africa is here. You can see it is even colored in red. The most beautiful continent is Africa. So Africa is one of them. Then we have South America. We have North America. We have Europe. We have Asia. We have Australia. And we have another one down here known as Antarctica. Antarctica. So those are the seven continents of the whole world. And I've said Africa is the most beautiful, even as you look at it. Isn't it? Okay. Now let's look at the water masses that surrounds Africa. I've said that Africa is surrounded by wa large water masses. So we want to see the water masses that surround Africa. We have the Mediterranean Sea to the north. The Mediterranean Sea is normally found around here. Just here between Europe and Africa, we have the Mediterranean Sea. Then we have the Red Sea to the northeast. The Red Sea is here. It separates Africa and Asia. Then we have the Indian Ocean. The Indian Ocean is here to the east. It separates Africa from Australia. Then we continue looking at the water masses. The water masses that surround Africa, we have the Southern Ocean to the south here. Normally there is a Southern Ocean here. This one here, Southern Ocean to the south, it separates Africa and Antarctica. Then we have the Atlantic Ocean to the west. Here you are. We have the Atlantic Ocean to the west. It surrounds Africa. It separates Africa from South America. Now when you look at the whole of Africa, you can see the way it is surrounded by the water. Is that true? Good. So Africa... Very beautiful continent. Then now when we talk about the position of Africa, we are looking at the most easterly point of the mainland of Africa being a place known as Cape Guadafui. Another name is Ras Hafan. Cape Guadafui or Ras Hafan. Then the most westerly point is Cape Verde. Then the farthest point to the north is Cape Blanco. Cape Blanco is also Ras Ben Saka to the north. Then while to the south it is Cape Agulhas. You get that? Let's continue. Here we are. Position of Africa. This is the position of Africa. And when I'm talking about those capes, you can see the way Africa looks. Look at the head. Look at the tail. I'm just going to tell you what is there. So this is the Cape, Cape Blanco, Ras Ben Saka, here. 
Then we have Cape Guadafui. Cape Guadafui is over here. Then we have Cape Agulhas. Cape Agulhas is down here to the south. Then we have Cape Verde. Cape Verde is just here. So that is the shape of Africa. Now let's continue and see more and more about Africa. So when I say Africa is almost an island, it is true. Almost an island. But an island is a mass of land surrounded by water. So if it were not for the northeast, and I suppose that place should be the Swiss Canal, then Africa, we could have said that Africa is an island. So we say that Africa is just almost. So it is separated by the Swiss Canal from the Sinai Peninsula. Africa is separated by the Swiss Canal from the Sinai Peninsula. What is a peninsula learner? A peninsula can be said or can be described as a piece of land almost surrounded by water. A piece of land almost surrounded by water is known as a peninsula, almost surrounded by water. Then this very, very peninsula, it is not an island, but we can say is connected to the mainland on one side. The water almost surrounds it, but on one side it is connected to the, uh, it is connected to the mainland. That is a peninsula for us. Africa gains something important. There is a 14 kilometers wide Strait of Gibraltar. Strait of Gibraltar separates Africa from Spain. That is Europe. So when I talk about 14 kilometers separating uh, the Strait of Gibraltar, only 14, that means somebody can swim from Africa to Europe. Somebody can swim if possible. Somebody, a good swimmer can swim if that is not a deep end then that person can swim and leave Africa and go to Europe, only if possible. I've not said that you go there and swim, I've just said only if possible. We also have the Strait of Babel Mandeb. The Strait of Babel Mandeb separates Africa from Asia by only 32 kilometers. Those 32 kilometers are of water. So I'd say, what is a strait? When we talk about a strait, a strait is a narrow passage of water that connects seas or large areas of water. You get that? What is a strait? It is a narrow passage, just a passage of water that connects the seas or large areas of water. I've not talked about rivers. I've not talked about lakes. I'm talking about the seas and maybe the oceans, those are the large water bodies we talk about. So a strait is a narrow passage. So we are seeing the position of Africa. So we are talking about the 14 kilometers straits of Gibraltar just here, Africa and Europe. We are talking about Bab El Mandeb Strait just here, here, just here. Then those are the straits I'm talking about. So the Sinai Peninsula is just here. Then we also have, remember I talked about the Cape Verde here. Then I talked about the Cape Guadafui. Then I talked about the Cape Agulhas. Then I talked about the Cape Blanco or Rasben Saka. So those parts, at least they are touching Africa and water. But the straits are some narrow parts. Position of Africa compared to other parts of the world. Let's look at the shape the shape of Africa. So the shape of Africa can be described as irregular. Irregular means it is not a triangle, it is not a rectangle, it is not even a circle. It is just a shape there which you cannot even describe. So we say that shape is irregular. The 
then how do we describe it? To the north, it seems very wide compared to the south, which appears very narrow. So Africa is, we look at the way, the, the, the shape of our heads and the neck, you find that to the north, Africa is as, as, as wide, is so wide, it can be compared with human, human head, and then to the south can be compared with human neck. That's why I'm saying to the north, it seems very wide compared to the south, which appears narrow. Then at Cape Guadafui, Cape Guadafui, which is also known as Ras Hafan, the continent appears horn-shaped. Horn-shaped, horn, a horn, a horn of a cow, that's a horn. So this region is normally known as the horn of Africa because of that horn-shaped. I've just said that the horn-shaped is at the Cape Guadafui or Ras Hafan. Now look at the shape of Africa. Just look at the shape of Africa. Maybe we can enlarge it. Yes. Look at the shape of Africa now. I'd said to the north, it is bigger or wider compared to the south. And the horn is here. That is the horn. Horn of Africa is found around there. So when I'm talking about to the east, it's like horn-like. It is like a horn. You can see it's, it looks like a horn. So this part is normally known as the horn of Africa. Then to the south, you can see the way it looks, it is like slim or slender or smaller or narrow. But to the north, it is so wide. You understand? That is how the shape of Africa looks. Then now let's look at the size of Africa. We can say that Africa is the second largest continent in the world. Remember I'd say that we have seven continents in the world and Africa is the second largest. Africa covers an area approximately 30.3 million square kilometers. 30.3 million square kilometers. This is about 40% of the world's total mass of land. So the rest of the world mass of land is left at 60%, but Africa now is that one, 30.3 million. Then we look at the continents of the world, size in square kilometers and rank. The continent, size in square kilometers and the rank. They are here. The largest here is Asia. Asia is 43 million 600, 608 square kilometers and it is the largest. Africa is the second largest at 30,222,000. Then after that we go to North America, 25,349,000 being the third, third largest. We go to South America, 17,611,000 thousand fourth largest we go to antarctica antarctica is 13 million 340 thousand which is the fifth largest then we have europe 10 million 498 thousand and it is the sixth largest then we come to australia which is 8 million 923 thousand it is the seventh largest. So with that, I've already shown you the continents of the world in square kilometers and even their rank. Location of the countries of Africa. I've given you a map of Africa. This map of Africa has all the countries of Africa here. All the countries of Africa. This, they are all included there. There are even some in the, in, in, the, in, the, in the water. We have some, we call them islands. So though, that is the location of countries of Africa. Let's see what happens. Africa has 55 independent countries. 55, 55 independent countries. 
had said earlier, or you learned earlier in Standard 6, that South Sudan was created in July 2011 when it became independent. So South Sudan became the youngest in Eastern Africa when you learned in Standard 6. But now I'm saying that the, among the independent countries of Africa, South Sudan was the latest to get its independence. Then we have the largest country in size, which is Algeria. And Algeria is approximately, approximately 2,381,741 square kilometers. And the smallest country in Africa is Seychelles. So Seychelles has an area of 455 square kilometers. Very small, very tiny. Then we have Africa has 49 mainland countries and six islands. I've said the mainland where we have the land where we step on soil, there are 49. But the ones in the water are six. So those ones are called islands. So island countries of Africa, I want to show you from the largest to the smallest, they are as follows. We have Madagascar, it's the largest. Then we have the Cape Verde, we have Comoros, we have Mauritius, we have Sao Tome and Principe. These ones are two. Then they normally combine together. Then we have the Seychelles, which is the smallest. The islands found in the Atlantic Ocean. We have the Atlantic Ocean, we have Cape Verde, Sao Tome and Principe. And that is to the west of Africa. The Atlantic Ocean is to the west of Africa. We have the islands as Cape Verde, Sao Tome, and Principe. Whereas the ones which are found in the Indian Ocean to the east of Africa, to the east of Africa are Madagascar, Comoros, Mauritius, and Seychelles. So those are island countries of Africa. Then there are other countries which are landlocked. I'd, I'd taught you in class six, and as I said, a landlocked country is a country which does not have a coast, does not have a coastline, or does not have a coast with the water, the large water bodies like the sea and the ocean. They do not have. So they are just landlocked, they are inside. So landlocked have no coastlines. So the landlocked countries of Africa include the following. We have Mali, Burkina Faso, we have Niger, Chad, Central African Republic, South Sudan, Ethiopia, Uganda, Burundi, Rwanda, Malawi, Zambia, Zimbabwe, Swaziland, and Lesotho. So these countries are landlocked. Even when you look at them in the map, they do not have any, any, any coastline. They don't just have. So that is how they were made. So Lana, I've talked quite a lot. We need to check if we really got, if you really got what I was teaching since the time I started. So I have questions here on the screen which I want you to answer. Number one. Name the seven continents of the world from the largest to the smallest. Name the seven continents of the world from the largest to the smallest. Can you name them? Let's look at the answer. I think you have already done. Here we are. We have number one, Asia, which is the largest. Africa, second largest. North America, third largest. South America, fourth. And Antarctica, fifth. Europe and Australia. I've said name the seven continents of the world from the largest to the smallest. So they are like that. Dear Lana, we have learned a lot. So yours is to go through your textbook and read more about Africa, the position, size, and shape of Africa. After you've got the position, size, and shape of Africa, then identify all those countries that make Africa. You'll be such a good person. You'll be able to get everything. Otherwise, I've given you an assignment here. Draw a table with the countries of Africa 
and their sizes in alphabetical order A to Z. A will start with Algeria. So Z will, uh, will be any country that Zambia, Zimbabwe, they'll be coming at the, at the end. Otherwise, Lana, I hope you enjoyed the lesson. Until next time, I have been your teacher, Dina. Stay tuned. Thank you for listening. Until next time.